And I guess what they were seeing was extremely masculine men being extremely vulnerable. Have you ever felt stuck or that you're not a part of a tribe of people that you really want to be a part of, but you just have no idea how to get there? Well, Coach Holler, known as Lino, is a transformational coach who helps people break through. He's a breathwork coach. He's a workshop facilitator. And today in our conversation, we get through some awesome stuff. And he gets... He went through so many practical tools and tips. And I just love the way he spoke. We had such a beautiful conversation on masculine and feminine energy and how to really start progressing with your life whenever you're stuck and like what you can actually do to do it. So guys, if you like this podcast or you get anything out of it, please hit that like, share or subscribe. Chuck it on your story, whatever that we, that would be extremely appreciative. And also, um, if you need any links or anything, check anything down below, especially when it comes to my coaching and what I offer there or any discount links, just have a little look below. So without any further ado, we'll see you guys in the inside. And I'm so excited for you guys to listen to this podcast. Lino, brother, thank you so much for coming on to the show. Thanks for having us. Yeah, all good, man. So what have you been working on recently or doing recently, which is sort of giving you some passion and motivation? You know, um, I had a lot of plans for 2022. And, and man, to be 100% honest with you, I got, I got smacked with COVID. Oh. I got smacked with COVID and it, and it put a real standstill on my things. And... Um, a fair few events this is basically what the course of my year had been january 1st great start to the year prime the year really really well second great day third that was the monday yep and my wife and i we had a bit of a serious conversation when we met we actually um i'd projected basically like the next 20 years and and we were sort of i had a reflection i looked at this plan and i said to her babe we actually could possibly have another child if you want to. So that was sort of the third and the fourth. And this was a long discussion. Um, and then COVID hit me. I had seven clients, you know, coaching clients back to back. And by like the sixth one, I wasn't feeling so great. Then I got sick and I went to sleep at like six o'clock at night, woke up, sweats, fever, all the things. And that was me for the next eight days, fever for the next eight days. So all these plans that I had, I actually had to let go of and um just surrender just just let go um i'd committed myself to running every day for 365 days i had to let go of that um and then a chest infection hit me and then um i'm tongan so my homeland tongan they got hit with a volcano so a volcano a, a nearby volcano got hit a tsunami hit um our country and then um, I had a, a, some, you know, a, a cousin of mine, you know, pass away as well. And then what I took away from that was live your life. It could be your health. It could be a natural disaster. It could be a loss in your family. You know, there's life is going to happen. Yeah. So what it really woke me up to think about was when I heard about the, the tsunami was I was, I had my son in my arms and we were on the balcony I was looking at him thinking our, our homeland, our motherland is just had a tsunami and they're struggling. And I'm looking at him thinking you, these are your relatives as well. The shape of your nose, the look of your skin, the shape of your body is because of our lineage. And I'm like, if something, let's say they all get wiped out. I'm like, what have I can take care of my family, but have I done enough to position myself to take care of my parents and my relatives? I'm like, no, I haven't. So that really woke me up and it's made me extremely passionate to really making the most of what I have available to me and that making 2022, um, this is the year where I extend myself further, not just for community, not just for my immediate family, but also for my parents and my siblings and my home country as well. Nice, man. And like, that's I hope just... that wasn't too much. But no, that's, that that's, was great. That, man. That's what's been firing with inside of me lately. Dude, that's so much for like to overcome personally. So how have like, have any of your plans changed for 2022? Like sort of what are the, what are the reflections? um originally i'd sort of last year i did over 60 workshops and um i 
I told myself when I set the plans for the year, I said, look, okay, only two weekends a month that I'll do workshops. So I generally do a Saturday and I'll do a Sunday. And last year, I just told myself I would say yes. So I pretty much did anything that was after me. And as the year went on, I started to be a little bit more selective, knowing when to say no. But this year, I'm like, okay, I don't have to do as many as last year. This year is not about repeating. So I adjusted it in that way. Um, but the impact of wanting to be able to help my own family more, help my own country more, because um, that's going to take, you know, many, many years. Being able to have a legacy, I guess, you know, far beyond my own immediate family of my wife and my children and the community, community that I serve. Um, that's what's changed. There's been some minor adjustments here and there. Um, definitely. There's How definitely been some adjustments. Yeah, how does that make you feel, man? I mean, I've just been Which, having that. I mean, because you had like this big plan for 2022 and then universe has come in and tested you. And now things are a little bit just like perception change. How does that make you feel? It, it humbled it humbled me massively. Um, like day eight of COVID, the fever hadn't gone, you know, for so long. I Like I found myself on day seven and day eight pretty much like praying to God. Like it just was, it was so overwhelming, the fever. And I'm like, you imagine your body being hot for a week. Yeah. And it just, my central nervous system was really, really cooked. So it really humbled me. Um, it humbled me, you know, in my marriage as well. It humbled me in business and what I, I'm listening to my body more. I'm listening. And I was already listening to my body, but obviously the universe wanted me to listen even deeper. There was things that I wasn't listening to. There was things that I wasn't hearing. And, um, and I think it's been much greater for it, much yeah. greater for it. Dude, for sure. I had some similar recently just in terms of training, <laughs> like a fitness athlete. And like, I just wasn't paying attention to my body and bam, injury. And I'm like, ah. and then as soon as I yeah. figured out why and did all the stuff, I'm, I'm doing everything in order to fix it. And I'm like, whilst I've been like this, literally just this morning I was training. I was like, these were the things that I weren't doing, which are contributing to my damn injury, <laughs> which are a lot less severe than what has been happening for you but I, I'm, I'm just making that reflection to yeah, I understand sort of how that happens also well Andrew, i think it, it, it all um it's an ecosystem we live in an ecosystem right everything touches everything everything is connected so i imagine unconsciously you are hearing and feeling that you weren't addressing certain things and you're like oh, it'll be right it'll be right <laughs> just go a little bit more and then you, did you say it was your hamstring it was my lower back uh, because I don't have yeah. hip flexion in one of my hips. Um, one of them is mm. good, right? One of them isn't. So it's very good, yeah. sort of complex. It's like when I run, if I'm not being mindful when I'm running, um, lower back's going to go. Start training yeah. or whatever, or squatting or doing any sort of uh, leg exercise, lunges, whatever it is, um, deadlifts. Anytime I'm moving my hip, if I'm not careful of like just being mindful and just thinking about squeezing the right areas, boom. <laughs> Mm. and i feel like the older we get the you know the more mindful we have to be not because we get worse i think our body just requires more awareness so like what we can get away with when we're younger like our body is just it's resilient it's extremely resilient and we can bounce back from injuries but the older we get we just don't you don't bounce back the way you used to and yeah. it's not that you can't do stuff but I think that's, you know, our body just telling us, take it. Hey, listen to me. Listen to me. <laughs> Pay yeah. attention to this. Yeah. It's good though. It forces us to be more self-reflective and, um, you know, intelligent in terms of just um, how we do everything. And I'll, I sort of like how it forces you to be present all the time because I find like, you know, as, as you progress with age, you know, be having those extremely moments where to, to be extremely present become less and less because you get so caught up and that's when things sort of happen um which i'm sure you can you can resonate with yeah yeah 100 percent. yeah so man i'd love to hear about like because obviously a lot of the stuff that you do works with helping you know people get present and do things i'd love to hear about um the workshops i'd love to hear about some of the things that like you specialize in and then i'd love to hear as well afterwards just before i forget to say this i'd love to hear about a really good um or a powerful story that sort of impacted you whilst you've been um doing this work too um well my, my background is you know 15 years personal training sort of like 20 now i started back in uh 2000 and 
well, I did my certificate back in 2003. So it was a long time ago. Um, I was a factory worker at the time and I, I was um, I was flipping fridges. I was making fridges and they would put me on this 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 station like on double double shifts. My back was really killing me. So I told myself, what job can I do that will help my body? I'm like, I need to... Uh, um, and then I, I dived into personal training. I dived into personal training and I've been full-time personal training since 2005. Um, and then at about 2015, I bought a, a boot camp franchise um, back about that time. And I had that for about a decade. And then I met my wife and I'm like, you know what? I've made my money here. I've made my impact, but it didn't do what I felt like I wanted to do. And if I, if it was going to, it would have happened by now. So I let go of my, my boot camp franchise um, for the second time. Um, I walked away, took a break, came back, got back into personal training. I took like a, a six month break off and I let go of the boot camp and I'm like, I think I just need to focus on personal training. Then eventually transitioned onto online. And then um, after we got married, my wife and I got married. I'm like, okay, if I don't learn to transition online, I'm going to be stuck on the tools at 40 years old delivering meal plans, workout programs, 12-week challenges. And I'm like, I don't think that's the future I want for myself. So I slowly started into, you know, working on uh, working with clients online. And then I started enrolling myself into courses, into workshops. And the question I asked myself was, I had a client that said to me, told me, bro, I'm going to go do this NLP course. And I was like, neuro-linguistic program? He's like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, cool. Count me in. I'll do it. Yeah. Didn't even really know what I was getting. I was familiar, but I wasn't sure. Anyway, we did the course and I was like, this is phenomenal. Book me into the next one. And I just <laughs> workshops and courses and uh, coaches. And like I've spent like tens and thousands of dollars, you know, on, on my own coaches as well. And that's what really got me to collapse time and fast track my progress in this space. And getting to my workshops how that sort of happened was i was part of a coaching program and what we had to do was once a month get out to mother nature no technology for about 30 minutes so this one time i went out up to springbrook from, with myself and, and it was a great experience i came back and i walked in the gym one day and a guy i know he was looked like there was something up and i was like bro you good and he's like yeah cool and i was like looks like something's up and i was like girls work and he was like how'd you know I'm like man it can only be a couple of things <laughs> so I, I, I said have you ever done a primal scream before and he was like uh, nah so i showed him one of me doing a primal scream on my previous walk i was like bro that is raw so i sent him a message and i said bro would you like to go for a walk on wednesday he's like yeah cool so everything i did on my walk we did on our walk and i took him for the same walk i did and he said brother we need to bring more men on this so about 10 weeks later, we brought a group of you know men out on that walk. And one of the men, he, I said, if you're going to film anything, now's the time to fill it, film it. No one does the haka like, you know, my bro does. So he did that. Then I demonstrated the primal scream. Goosebumps, four minutes bro. of footage got captured. Yeah, four minutes of footage got captured. So it's at the bottom of Springbrook is where it was. You know, and um, that four minutes worth of footage got turned into a one minute video posted it up the following week and it went viral. So what we had was people asking us to come for, it's like a hundred thousand views in 24, 48 hours. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> and our phones were going off, just constantly going off. And I guess what they were seeing was extremely masculine men being extremely vulnerable. Hmm. You know, um, my bro, his father came on the walk as well. So that got captured in, and I guess father son moment, they were crying. You know, that got captured as well. You've got, you know, 110 kilo shredded man doing the haka, him crying with his father, me doing a primal scream. You know, some of our guys, most of the guys over 100 kilos, extremely masculine looking men. That's the video that went viral. And we had people asking us to come do walks in the cities. So that's what we did in the first year. We went, we went to Sydney, Melbourne, uh, Hamilton in New Zealand, Napier, Auckland, Queenstown, Christchurch. And, and we walked in all of these cities in our first year. And the following year, we brought women into the space. So we did walks with men and women. And what I found was we have two people in the same relationship, a man and a woman that are coming on our walks. 
this man, that woman, they're in the same relationship. They're working on themselves, but they're not working on the relationship. hundred <laughs> percent. So I thought at some point in time, we got to put these two people in the same room. So towards the end of the year, we ended up doing couples workshops and um, then we moved into men's workshops. So right now we do men's and women's walks, couples workshops, and we do men's workshops as well. Uh, community events as well. We do, we do a breathwork event on the beach, uh, corporate events, like some private stuff as well. But that's what we do. And, and, and that's how we got there. And yeah. Now you're just having that's a blast. Yeah. Now, the, now this is the life. So at the time when we started, I was, I was still personal training and I told myself I won't hang up the boots you know, um, for, for two years. Um, but I went away to a retreat and when we came out of the retreat, that actually took our phones off us. Uh, when we came out of the retreat, the world had changed. COVID had hit. So no COVID pre retreat during retreat, COVID hit, we come out phones back to us, the whole world had changed. And we just, it didn't really understand it till we came home and, uh, we had to, we had to isolate for two weeks and, and literally, because, you know, remember the gyms had all closed. So my 15 years of personal training, you know, had just come to a halt. So it's not like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm stopping personal training. That was forced to stop. So, yeah, it was, um, it was really sort of interesting. I started in 2005, finished my course in 2003, 2020, personal training finished. So now I, um, one of my clients, he built a studio at his office and, and I just trained him. That's it. And outside of that, it's, it's coaching, it's, it's workshops, it's events, it's community events. This is, this is, this is what I've been doing ever since COVID kicked in full time. Dude, it's so good. And it's such a good thing to hear. I'd love to know, like personally, just obviously, because you do a lot of like mindset stuff as well, especially like within your coaching. I'd love to know like some of the things that you either go through in the workshops or you go through with the coaching, just some things that in your mind have really helped people could be sayings, reflections or whatever it is um, that have helped people sort of get through that you think is just like, Oh, I really like this. If I could share this with anyone, I'd love to share some of these things. Cause I'm just being mindful of just anyone who's listening. If they're like, Oh, if there's any sort of like tools there for me to do, think about, get challenged. Like where, where can we go? Yeah. Uh, look, uh, my belief is, you know, the power of your life comes down to the power of your questions. So you want a more powerful life, ask more powerful questions. But also if you can master your breath, you can master your life. Yeah. Um, breath work has been the most transformational tool that I've ever used. And that's what's become a really powerful tool for it's in all of our workshops and in all of our events. Um, and I guess most people aren't aware of the power of the breath and how malleable it is and how versatile it is but how empowering it is it can be used to to release trauma it can be used to empower yourself it can be used to prime your day um it can use to reset you you know like maybe you you're finding yourself triggered and it can reset you so that you can recenter yourself back again so breath is an extremely powerful thing um a lot of what i do is is based on everything i do is based on family values Men's medicine is based off family values. My coaching style is based off family values. And I guess the reason why that is, is in all my years of working with people, in all my years of personal training, it wasn't my meal plan or my training program that got them the results. It was talking to them about their lives. And generally, when we're talking to people about their lives, it's generally a lot of it's family stuff, mom stuff, dad stuff, relationship stuff, you know, it's home stuff. So that's generally what I'm talking to with my clients. And I guess some, some takeaways you can take away from here is, you know, we understand that there's, if there's a tree, we can see that there's a tree, but behind that, there's a shadow, you know, and for those that don't understand, you know, shadow work, there's, there's a shadow side to everything. So if we think about for an analogy that was shared with me in really simple terms was that if we have the feminine and the masculine, there's the healthy side, but then there's also the unhealthy side. And that for us to be fully, you know, centered, conscious, um, embodied as a man or a woman, that both men and women have masculine and feminine in us to integrate the masculine and the feminine, we actually also have to integrate the unhealthy into the healthy. So we're talking about mummy and daddy issues. <laughs> yeah. And parents have done the best they could with what they have. So once we're able to integrate, 
you know, our relationship with the masculine, the unhealthy relationship with the masculine and the feminine, we can integrate that in with the healthy. And now we can integrate the masculine and the feminine and be conscious, heart-centered, embodied, and live from our, our higher self. Yeah, dude. So how do people, if they're like, okay, I know that I've got some stuff unconscious showing up with the masculine, the feminine, feminine in an unhealthy way. I'm not sure yeah. how to find it. Like, where is it? Like, what would you suggest like sort of people to do to sort of, you know, acknowledge those things and, and in- integrate them? You know, I think journaling is a really powerful place to start and, and starting to even communicate with the opposite sex that are in your life, you know, your partner, your siblings, your parents, um, a task that I'd given to one of my female clients yesterday was to take her father out on a date. You want to improve you. You want to lean into abundance. You want to live the life you want to live. You want to overcome these blockages. You're going to have to heal your relationship with your father. Start off with and real simple task I'm going to give you is to take your father out for a coffee, breakfast, lunch, whatever it is. And you have to pay. Yeah. How much do you know about your father? Nothing. Awesome. You got lots to talk about. <laughs> and just start there. And then the other task was to buy her mother flowers. These simple little things, we don't realize the impact that they have. And, and opening up the conversation and getting to know the people that we share our life with, it's a great place to start. And what you'll start to realize is you don't know as much about the people that you know as what you thought you did. And this is where, I guess, compassion, humility, and understanding, acceptance starts to come in. We start to realize, wow, we're all really human, aren't we? (laughs) They are as a human as I am. And I feel like that's a great place to start. And then journaling is a powerful thing, you know, to be doing, you know, otherwise these thoughts, they're just in our head. These emotions, they're just stuck in the body. So a daily journaling practice is, is a way just to, and it doesn't even have to make sense. I remember when I was going through a really traumatic time in my life and I couldn't get these emotions, these thoughts to process. And I was like, you know what? Whoever said sentences have to, sentences have to make sense. I love it. I'm, I'm talking to myself anyway, so it doesn't matter. And I just, and I remember there was an exercise that was shared with me and it's called the allowing process. And basically you would say, I'm allowing and whatever comes up, that's what it is. And if you visualize a funnel, right? all the shit's at the top. And as you get down to the bottom, you get down to what the actual thing is. There's, you're sifting through the stuff. And, and I, just, I just spoke words, whatever came out. And I eventually got to the end. I'm like, why did it take me so long to get to that? Yeah. Do you remember, so do you remember what it was? Um, it was freedom. It was the freedom to just express. I was trying to get it right. I was trying to make sense of what I was experiencing and in a way that sound logical in a way that, that, you know, sounded normal. And you know what, man, a lot of what we experience, you know, it's, it's on the brainstorming table, you know, it's, there's no final draft yet, but we're trying to get a final copy out of like the mess, the mess, you know, to be able to get to the final copy, you get to go go through multiple drafts. So just throw it out there on the chopping table, whatever doesn't make the cut, let it hit the floor. Yeah, you'll eventually get to the thing that you're trying to get to. So I find like journaling is a really powerful way to do that. Breath work is really powerful to do that. And, and something that's coming up for me now is um, there's, a, there's an exercise that I did um, at a recent retreat that I went to and it was a forgiveness letter. It was a forgiveness letter. I've done like sort of two, I did a forgiveness letter like the other day too. And, and it was really powerful, especially after what I experienced at the beginning of the year, just forgiving yourself for, for the stuff you put yourself through, you know, for the stuff that you've experienced. So I find like that could be some really simple things that, you know, I guess your listeners could do for themselves to help shift it and move these things, but also reach out for support reach out for support you know someone like yourself someone that you trust is really important find yourself a coach um, something i share with my clients all the time or anyone that's that's booking in for a coaching session is if no one's taught you how to do it then how do you know how to do it <laughs> if no one's taught you how to express your feelings or emotions 
then how do you know how to do it? And we have a world of people that don't know how to do this. They can feel that something's supposed to happen. But if no one's taught you, if you haven't learned it from anyone, if it hasn't been modeled for you, then how do you know? You know? Yeah, dude. <laughs> so reach out for support um, from someone that you trust, from someone that's doing something or living the life that you know um, that you want to live, that has the results that you're looking for as well, to be able to support you and to be able to do the things that you want to do. So I hope that I hope that all sort of answers your questions. Oh, dude. Yeah. hundred percent. You answered like all the questions and I was, it was beautiful. Um, I'd love to dive a little bit more um, into breath and some of the things that, you know, you do and hear about some of the, you know, transformational experiences that you've seen with witnessed and facilitated in your um, some of your breath work sessions and a rough idea of what it sort of looks like and involves. Yeah. Um, when we first started, Breathwork was, um, you know, look, on our first walk, it was a group of us and um, look, I'll be fully transparent. We actually went on plant medicine on our first walk. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. With Chuma, it's um, quite subtle. Yeah. And, but what I told myself was, this is not what we want to be, you know, attached to. So we're going to have to let go of this thing. And I switched it for Breathwork. And we started off with a small dose, you know, a small um, session of breath work. And we just sort of built on it after that. And what I found was breath work was more powerful than anything else. And the reason why I believe that is because you actually have to work for it. Yeah. You only get out what you put in. And what I guess the mental health label got stuck to us because not because we're a mental health program, but because majority of the people that were coming to us were struggling with mental health. And what they were leaving with was with, they were leaving different. They were leaving, you know, new and they were let the things that I'd heard were, they were overcoming anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts, addiction. You know, on our first, you know, walk, there was you know, guys that had like, you know, drug addiction for like years, years and years. And they were able to overcome that. Um, men that have people that have gone back and they've repaired usually when you if you come out of a big deep breath work session whatever you've experienced generally you want to take action on that and for most people like i said before it's family stuff so people wanting to talk to their partners talk to their parents talk to their siblings reach out to their their, their friend that they've had a broken relationship with so it was also helping heal people's relationships marriages relationships with their father relationships for their, with their mothers um with their siblings that they have friends they haven't spoken to a long you know for a long time yeah so like the list is like really 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 long um we've breathed people at the bottom of a mountain at the top of a mountain um, short periods big deep breath works some with breath holds some with no breath holds um there's some of the experiences from the walks of from our workshops I've experienced where you know people have shared with me we just in the workshops I guess we don't have to walk anywhere we get to dive deeper into the workshop because we get to be still um in the once one one place one location so we do a bit of goal setting in there as well and what I guess their breath work experience has empowered them to do because now they've changed their state so they're in a great state for, for influence and, and suggestion and, and to be able to, to do goal set. So they've gone on to create new uh, businesses, uh, buy houses, have, expand their family, um, take, change their careers. Like the things that the stories that we've heard come back is just crazy, just crazy. And, and who would have ever thought breath work? <laughs> Dude, nuts. What's like sort of been your personal experience with it? Like how has it benefited um, you, if you don't mind sharing? Um, Breathwork has helped me. Like I use it at the beginning of my day uh, to the prime, whether it's a cold shower at home, I'll breathe during the cold shower or whether it's at the beach, I generally love to go to the beach. I love the layering effect, the compound effect of grounding, breathing, sunrise, negative ion exchange in the ocean that little sequence i really love that um breath work for for releasing i've breathed for i've breathed up to three and a half hours um and what i found was that the deeper and the longer you breathe the deeper you go 
well, and the more you get, yeah, the more you get out of it. Um, and the longest I breathe by myself. Uh, so that was at a retreat. The longest I breathe by myself is 90 minutes. Uh, breathwork can be whatever you want it to be. And the truth is whatever's inside, that's what's going to come out anyway. Um, so the 90 minute session was me priming myself to, I guess it was a bit of manifestation, but also taking my, I'll never take anyone through anything that I've not been through myself. So um, this morning's breathwork session that I, I guided my, my, my mate through was um, a sound and sunrise breath. So I've got a dig, I've got some instruments, drums, uh, conch shell, a whole bunch of singing bowls, a whole bunch of stuff. And it just, um, the element of sound adds another, you know, um, ex, you know, level of experience to your breath work as well. But yeah, the longer you go, the deeper it goes, the context of what you're breathing in the container, the environment, the sound, you know, a whole bunch of things. Uh, when I was going through my first um, split with my first business partner. It was quite a traumatic experience for me. So I breathed every day for three, every day for three months and it helped heal me. It helped heal me through that time. And I guess if we're always relying on someone else to help support us, to help heal us, we're going to, we'll end up codependent. So that was a way of me helping support myself and anything extra. I was able to, I still reached out for support. Um, but on a daily basis, that was my daily commitment to myself to just give myself what I need. Yeah. And how do you like hold yourself accountable? Um, a ritual every day, every day. Like it just, there's a big difference between routines and rituals. And I guess um, rituals, there's a lot more, there's a deeper meaning to it on why you're doing it and why you're doing everything. And a routine is more about ticking boxes. I've done X, Y, and Z. Um, and just anchoring in my day. So when I started last year, I just told myself that I would say yes to everything. And I would start my day at four o'clock every day. Many years ago, when I was first diving into this space, I was listening. You familiar with Eric Thomas? I'm not. Damn, I wish I was. Eric Thomas. <laughs> and his, Eric Thomas. So his thing is, if you want to succeed, you've probably heard his stuff. If you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, that's his. That's and his he line. held someone underneath the water. Yes. And like a, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, that's him. So um, many years ago, and he talks about how the most successful people in the world wake up at 3, 3.30 in the morning. So back then, that's what I used to do. 10 years ago, I used to wake up at like 3, 3.30 in the morning. Problem with that is it's not very, um, it's not very beneficial to a relationship. When you're, <laughs> when you're waking up at 3, 3 o'clock and your partner's laying there, like you're missing out on all the hugs and the cuddles and the snuggles. You know, you're missing out on that. It's not very beneficial to the relationship. If you want longevity in your relationship and in your love, then <laughs> you'll, you'll be considered. <laughs> yeah, you'll be considerate. So I sort of allowed myself to push it back a little bit more. Um, but I told myself I'd wake up at four o'clock every day and I'll go stick to my main routine and I'll say yes to everything that I wanted last year to be a, a great year. And this is how I'm going to anchor in my day. And I've just really sort of stuck to it since then. Um, it was quite a, a whirlwind and turbulent, you know, previous years leading up to when we first started you know men's medicine me coming out of personal training um it, it was quite a yeah it was, it was quite a roller coaster ride so last year making that commitment to myself um it allowed me to do those 60 workshops 60 plus workshops previously the previous year we did 15 and the first year we did 13 so last year massive massive contribution to last year's work you know ability was me anchoring in my day serving myself first um something that was shared with me on the retreat when COVID hit was was shared to the group was if you a lot of people want to have long days busy days and it's this hustle and this grind but is that what it's really about is it really about more hours or what if you put six hours into yourself and the next three hours were phenomenal and you got to achieve what you did, maybe more in the next three hours, in those three hours as what you would do in a normal 10 hour day. And that always sat with me. So when I came back from retreat, that's what I did. I was in lockdown for two weeks. So I would spend the first six hours focusing on myself. And then the next six hours was a work day. I'd knock off at six. So that's sort of what I did, you know, each day. And, and what I've sort of found now is I wake up at four by eight o'clock. That's the end of my morning. 
So I wake up, leave home at 4.30, have to be at the beach, do my thing. I need to be home like 5.30, 6. I go to the gym from 6 to 7. That's the time I've allocated for that. I come back, swap with my wife. She goes to the gym. I take my son for a walk. I come back by 8 o'clock. Now I'm ready to work with clients. And the day is powerful and productive after that. As opposed to just get out of your bed, roll out, go to the gym, do your thing, and then expecting that everyone's getting the best of you. And the truth is we always have room for more. So, you know, this is your life you, and energy doesn't lie. So your clients will always, they'll always feel your energy. And if you're not filling up your own cup, if you're not serving, investing in yourself and your own inner work, then eventually, eventually you'll shine. It's, it's kind of dull. Dude, it's going to wear off. Yeah, it hits home for me at the moment, um, you saying that. So I'm just having some big reflection about, oh, there's some things I need to change up that I didn't know, but now I know. So thank you for sharing that. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Anything specific? Um, oh, it's just the whole uh, getting out, go straight to the gym and, and go. You know, sometimes you get, like just for myself, I'm so passionate for the work that I do um, and that I get to do it. And sometimes it just takes over a little bit, you know, you get like super excited and you're doing this and then you go, you, you forget about you. And as you mentioned with the energy doesn't lie, like my energy, like also got hit with the vid as well. Yeah. A few weeks ago, not good, Yeah. but the energy is still, it's like, it's not 10 out of 10 as it usually is. And there's just a few things that I'm like, if I just change this, this, and this, it all going to come back. Like I don't like operating at a seven to an eight out of 10. I like being at a 10 out of 10 all the time. And you can do that, I believe, if you're really well balanced. And I just had had to, you know, get on top of a few little things. So you saying that, um, yeah, it's just taking a bit of time for myself in the morning. Um, just hit home. I was like, oh, damn, nailed yeah, it. Yeah, you, you know, like I, I, when, I, when I was a personal trainer, what I, when I eventually stepped into this space, what I thought to myself was, well, I guess the reason why I did that NLP course was to start off with was, another fitness course wasn't going to make me a better PT, a better coach. And I'm like, well, how do I actually help people? I'm like, I talk to them about their lives. Like legit, I cannot get you to follow your meal plan or your training <laughs> program if there's shit that's going on in your life. And I'm like, man, this is this is your program. Like, <laughs> I cannot tweak this anymore. That that meal plan's for you. And I'm like, if I cut any more out, like you're eating like 1200 calories, like it's this isn't going to end very well. You know, and I'm like, there's something else. There's something else going on. And I was like, okay, cool. It, it would either be a relationship or something that's going on at home. There's always something going on at home. But once we're able to talk about that, I guess it makes people, they feel seen, they feel heard, and they feel freer now. They were able to get that off their chest. And surprise, surprise, all of a sudden their lifts improve. They start to stick to the meal plan. They start to see results. I'm like, okay. Thank goodness. So that's what led me down the path that I'm on. And I guess what I sort of felt was that the fitness industry kind of told the world a lie that if you take care of your exercise and your nutrition, everything will be fine. But there are so many more pieces to the puzzle than just exercise and nutrition. But that's what we were sort of led to believe, right? And especially when, remember the, the hashtag Fitspo? Yeah. 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 Like it just, that was sort of, you know, I guess uh, when Instagram was really like a thing thing, you know, like it's definitely like this is a big part of business now. But when it was really sort of taking off, you know, fitness people were, that was sort of the leaders on influencers, you know, and I, I guess know. successful people were the leaders of hustle and grind and waking up early in the dark, grinding and bodybuilding <laughs> days, fitness competing days. This was, this was a massive influence on society. But we move forward five, 10 years, we realize there's so much more to it. Our mental health, our emotional health, our relationships, our spiritual health, all of these things. And lately what I've been asking a question with my clients is, you know, uh, I've been receiving a lot of, um calls from from fitness people i'm like okay let's let's just how much are you investing in your spiritual health nothing <laughs> mental health nothing <laughs> emotional health nothing physical health everything like, okay, so, 
So I, th- I think we can sort of work out, you know, where some things are a little bit lopsided. You know, we can't ex- be upset about the results that we haven't worked for and we can't expect a return on something we haven't invested in. So what we're going to start doing is start investing in these other areas of your life because that's what helps, you know, make up your whole life. And, you know, this is the inner work. Like no one, no one can do it for you. So, yeah, there's just the fitness industry. Yeah, there's, there's, there's so it's, and I think time has changed and I still love the fitness. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Cause you can make the mistake of swinging too far the other way as well. Oh, for sure. Everything matters, right? Oh, dude, everything. It's so like, as far as to get forward momentum, actually rolling and compounding, I believe it just takes you know so much time and effort just to look in and everything. And I think it's a real good opportunity um, for people who are personal training and stuff to learn um, all of the different things, or even as someone who is wanting to get fit and healthy um, to understand that, you know, the motivation to do so and everything else, the people that they pick to help coach them or support them through everything, they just got to spend a little bit of time into Then, you know, someone is going to, you know, specifically that's specifically going to help them in their problem and in their current environment and situation. Um, mm. I believe, and then obviously matching yourself to the to the right person who's, who's going to help you because you can match yourself with someone who's fantastic, but if they're not the right person for you, then yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent, yeah, definitely do your research and and take the effort, make the time to 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 talk to a few people. Like, don't think that the first person is going to be you know the right person. You maybe they are. But sometimes it might take you, you know, to talk to, to a couple of people to, to find yourself there. Um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So for people who are listening at the moment, like, all right, this is awesome. You've given us some practical, practical tools and some other things as well. But for yourself personally, and like your own experience, if people want to start to go, like, all right, I want to start like really investing in myself. Um, but, and I know what the end goal is, but that's overwhelming. <laughs> Yeah. So I want to take some of the, the smaller practice. You already mentioned like uh, journaling, um, speaking like with the relationships within your family and like forgiveness letters um, as like a practical tools to do, but just sort of just like other ways that people can just maybe really start getting the ball rolling for investing in themselves specifically, like where to look mm. or other things like that. Have you got any suggestions? Um, look, man, when I stepped into this space, like that, there was a workshop that I went to and, um, I guess when we're in the fitness world, you don't realize what else is out there. And I guess you, you don't know what you don't know. So when I sort of stepped into this space, I was, I was like, man, I had no idea that any of this stuff even existed at all. And I had all these friend requests coming. I'm like, man, where are these people coming from? And there's a big world out there with a lot to experience. And if you feel like you're gone on Groundhog Day or you know that there's more, reach out. Reach out to someone. And, and everyone always knows. They always know because they can feel that tug, right? They can feel that pull, that pull towards something. Maybe it's even that you're seeing someone that's triggering you. That's, a, that's, some, that's reflecting something inside of you. I would probably look at that and maybe ask, how is that person being a mirror for you in your life? Maybe you might actually need to reach out to that person. Maybe you need to dive into some questions about what's going on there. But we all have some kind of an inkling, some kind of an intuition on what we, what we need to do, what we want to do. And there's someone out there that you know, that you've seen, or someone you know that has worked with someone that's doing something that you want to do. My suggestion is lean into that. And a lot of the time we get signs, we get messages, but... We just pay no attention. Yeah. We don't stop long enough to allow it to, to download, to allow it to drop in, you know? Um, and I always liken it to this, is that, you know, when we're down and out, what do we have a tendency to do? To look at the floor. Yeah. yeah. When we're yeah, down and so out. True. Yeah. And when we dive a little bit deeper into it, and then when we find the answer, what do we have a tendency to do? To look up. <laughs> or when we're looking for answers, we have a tendency to look up too. And a story I sort of have around that is, is that when we're looking for answers, we have a tendency to look up. We're generally the universe, God, whatever it is. Yeah. And then bang, we get that aha moment. 
we get that realization, we get the answer that we're looking for, then what do we do? We look forward. We look in the mirror. The answer was always inside of us. Yeah, it was always yeah. inside of us. But if we don't take the time to make some time to quieten the noise, to be able to hear what's actually there for you, you may never get it. But I always feel that people know something. People will always, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. As much as you say that you know something, and if you don't know what it is you do want, the chances are you, you definitely know what you don't want. <laughs> yeah. You feel yeah. you know what you don't want, that's for sure. Yeah. So maybe write the list of that. And on the other side of that, what is it you do actually want? So we always, yeah, trust your intuition. You know, the body is a smart machine. Oh, dude, for sure. Dude, that was amazing. Um, I'd just like to give you a massive thank you for coming on to the show. And for people who are listening who like want to follow your stuff and find you, where do they go? Um, the best two places to find us is on Instagram at men's underscore medicine, or you can find me on my personal account, uh, Coach Holler. Uh, online, you can, on our website is uh, mensmedicine.info. Um, yeah, dot info. And yeah, they're the best places to find us. Sweet. And that will be linked below. If anyone is listening, if you want to suss out, you can just go click the link below. So man, if you would just like to, but all the things that we've talked about for everything, if you'd like to challenge everyone, like give them one little challenge for, for, for everyone who's listening, um, I'd love to you to leave just like one small challenge for people to do. And thanks so much for coming on, man. Um, is to start a daily ritual. Start a daily ritual at the beginning of your day and just commit yourself to it. Just commit yourself to it. Roll yourself out of bed, do the thing, whether it's a cold shower, whether it's breath work, whether it's a walk, and just start off with consistency. The hardest part is consistency. And when we start to get consistency, we start to get results. So after that, build on that. Start small, build big. Love that so much. Thank you, man. Thank you.